Hello everyone, it is I, Gabriel Riel. This is the Rise Atlantis show. Um, I have a new format for the show now. Now um, I have the there's uh, ring collar shirts. These type of um, shirts are called ringer shirts. It took me a while to find out what the name of these were. Uh, of course, it's also at the tip right here. You know, so it's really cool. Um, I got my um, my merchandise coming out really very soon, so it's very exciting. Um, also, with the show, got a new look. The background, as you can see here, um, <clears throat> I got like. Um, before I had this all in red, it just looked um, an eyesore, you know, so now I have it uh, more more displayed, basically, um, more organized, you know, so <clears throat> as time goes on, I'm going to keep um, bettering the show, the background, um, I plan to add lights, and I mean, I, I've thought of uh, black lights, I've used black lights before, but I want to do something else besides black lights. Um, like color changing lights or something. Uh, I really don't know yet. Um, <clears throat> so, um, my voice is a little hoarse. It's because I was, um, <clears throat> I'm almost better. Or, or I had a cold, you know, so my voice is a little bit hoarse, but it's not that bad. And, um, <clears throat> my coughing has really gotten better, so that's good. So, uh, the topic of the day will be about very strange, um, A very strange, uh, circular, flying saucer looking craft has been discovered in the ocean near Greece uh, through Google Images, um, Google Satellite. So it's very interesting. And <clears throat> it wasn't there um, a few years before. So, um, you know, the way Google Images posted is every couple of years. Um, I wish they come out with Google Live where you can see live satellite um, <clears throat> but of course privacy issues arise um, <clears throat> but only public areas I think should be visible you know um, not really houses just public areas you know so <clears throat> I know there's a lot of controversy um, when you get into uh, live satellite viewing you know, the government has and they need it to go after terrorists, you know, so. <coughs> um, <coughs> I feel the technology should come out uh, to where we all can use it. But I believe sensitive areas like our houses and stuff should not be uh, for live view. But public areas should be, you know, so. That's my take on it. Um, there's people that, that want, you know, um, everything visible and... Um, we do need a certain level of privacy, you know, because once you let technology become too new world order, it just um, becomes unstoppable at that rate. It's like a Pandora's box, you know, so, um, <clears throat> and it's weird <clears throat> because this circular craft is under the ocean. It's near the beach, near the sand. It's not right next to it. Um, I guess it would be um, how many feet in? I'm guessing around 50, 60 feet in. Not 50, 60 feet deep, but 50, 60 feet um, away from the beach sand. So, very strange. Um, <clears throat> and also, of a, a strange circular, uh, white circular rings that were found in the Gobi Desert. <clears throat> so, uh, very strange. I don't know exactly where the Gobi Desert is. I believe it's India. Uh, I'll check. Um, in a little bit. So that will be the topic of the day. Um, let's see here. Okay. And let me get, uh, let me get it going really quick. Let's see here. So now we'll go ahead and get into the news. Okay, let's see. USOs are being found in the Bermuda Triangle. The USOs stand for Unidentified Submersible Object. We're seeing so many weird creatures, um, not just washing up ashore, but everywhere, basically. And um, 
this one was in Vietnam. I'll go ahead and uh, So, a sea creature. They don't say exactly what it is. It's unidentified. Um, nothing like it exists in the world. It has creepy tentacles. Like an octopus, but way different. Uh, I wish I could zoom in on this thing. Let's see here. Okay, so it's very strange, you know. It looks like basically like some kind of it looks like tree um, tree branches, but they are not branches. So that is strange. <clears throat> and this was found in Vietnam. Vietnam. Okay, um, Vietnam was where um, would look like. Um, the Virgin Mary appeared in the sky. That was, I think, in 2008 or 9. So, could we be a, a, seeing a reoccurrence of the supernatural activity happening in Vietnam? <clears throat> Let's see here what else. What else? A big, Bigfoot growl caught on tape. Uh, it doesn't say where. Now again, these are um, um, proves my theory that uh, Bigfoot could be a ghost. That's why we're never able to capture them. Pe and people are able to see and hear them, but we're not able ever to capture them because my theory is Bigfoot is a ghost. That is right. Bigfoot is a ghost. Now they could create a Bigfoot scientifically through a hybrid half human half animal DNA so it is coming soon when these mad scientists create Bigfoot it's coming soon this doesn't say where it says a, a hot spot somewhere in the United States well, why doesn't it say exactly where what state what country I mean not what country it says in the United States what state what city you know Basically, book Bigfoot growl caught on tape. <clears throat> That's a, what you call an EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. Okay, let's see here. Let's see. Um, Okay. Huh. Discovery Channel Treasure Hunter claims he's found evidence of an ET spaceship. Now, my prediction is we're going to be seeing so much crazy stuff coming very soon. Like all these weird animals that are being found. My prediction that God could be creating new species out of thin air to make the people of the world wonder what's going on. Like, where, whoa, where did this thing come from? And a lot of these things aren't even deep sea uh, fish. So it's stuff that um, it just pops out of existence on Earth. It is my theory that God could be creating new species to prepare the world for Jesus' return. Um... <clears throat> Also, my theory is that UFOs could be apparitions. That's why they're able to appear and disappear and move at incredible speeds no um, aircraft can make, can make. Even if it has drone technology, it's all robotic. There he is. If it's going so fast and it switches, it could throw off all the gears, shift it so much that it destroys all the sensors and electronics in a drone-type spaceship that's automated so it is my theory that nothing human or robotic can move at incredible speeds stop on a dime and then change course at millions of light speed miles per hour you know so human or 
robotic cannot survive a whiplash effect basically is what I'm trying to um, explain is a whiplash effect um, when it's going so fast and then automatically stops on a dime and changes direction at millions of miles per hour n no one can withstand that no human and no robotic form so <clears throat> it is my theory that that's uh, um, they move so fast, it could be proof that there are apparitions. How they appear and disappear, we're going to be seeing them come low to the ground soon. My theory is people will be able to put their hands through these orbs that are going to come down soon. Um, my hope is that it won't burn people um, as it happens. Because um, I've seen videos of them coming very low. I've only seen one that appeared uh, moving over a roof. That's low enough. Um... I hope God can bring them all the way down to the ground, you know, where we can, like, move our hands to them, and um, we won't be burned by it, you know? <coughs> so it's my hope that these orbs will not burn us when we touch these orbs soon. That is my hope. You know, I, I would hate to see people getting burned by trying to move their hands to these orbs soon because my theory is is that these orbs are no longer going to be specks in the sky as UFOs anymore they're going to come all the way down man, and it's going to be uh, in the sight of uh, everyone to see I know it's it's hard because in Revelation talks about false prophets will bring down fire from the sky so great to deceive even the elect now that's why people say oh UFOs are demons and deception and this and that I agree a uh, certain part of it could be, but uh, we're going to be seeing stuff that uh, will clearly show atheists that there's no explanation for this. People call it ball lightning when these orbs start appearing in the sky, you know, but there is no explanation that they're going to um, try to uh, um, think of when it starts happening, when they start coming low to the ground. So that is my hope that God can bring these orbs of energy all the way down to the ground. It's not deception. It's not showing that, oh, they're extraterrestrial. No, it's showing atheists that it, there is something supernatural. There is a spiritual orb moving around, you know. <clears throat> so that is my hope. Um, <clears throat> you know, if there are people to say that it's... Uh, Deception, extraterrestrial demons and all that. I mean, I believe a certain part of it is, but we're going to be seeing far greater than orbs even. We're going to be seeing Jesus and God in the clouds and even moving like in real time. I'm not talking about just where it's so still. It's going to be moving like in real speed, you know, and um, it's really going to catch the world's attention. And, you know, we're seeing all kinds of strange stuff for all we know. These uh, um, creatures could be uh, hybrids being created by mad scientists. So, um, let me see here. See what this person says. That he found an E.T. spaceship. <coughs> Beneath the Bermuda Triangle. Now, this is it right here. I mean, it's weird. It looks like a, like a ball of something. I mean, there, there it is, and then right here it looks like a tunnel or something. Um, and this right here, I don't know, if they're like a tower or something. So a tower with a tunnel with the dome shape. Um, okay, it it does look like something. Now, if you look carefully right here, you see the the dome shape edging off. So you see the perfect, uh, not perfect circle, but a circle. It looks like there's holes in it, like a meteor type or something. I don't know. It looks like that could be some kind of meteor. If you look closely, even, right here, I know it's hard to see because the lighting and everything blurs. But um, I'm trying to get it to where you see the... There it is. You see the bottom left. You see the bottom left forming the circle there. So it is strange. I agree, he did find something, but is it extraterrestrial is the question. For all we know, that looks like it could be some kind of meteor or asteroid. I mean. 
<clears throat> but what if they created that and are hoaxing it so they need a carbon data to find if it's really ancient um, but who knows you know I mean the theory is extraterrestrials have lived longer than us that's why they're more advanced in technology so all their um, what's it called resources are older than Earth so in theory carbon dating should show that that object should be way older than Earth's resources. Let's see here. Okay, this is crazy. Ford unveils exoskeleton vest to lighten the load for workers. This is like they made movies on this with like superheroes. We're like it's like a super suit. You can lift more than what a regular human can lift, and it's all just you know with um, <coughs> uh, robots and robotics. Not really robotics in the sense of like cyborg and all, but like uh, motors that that you wear that can lift more so that's very interesting let's see here meet Bronson the 33 pound cat making waves on Instagram um, that's weird I really don't like um, all this talking where people making fun of overweight cats I feel that like it's like fat shaming you know um, the more we start doing this and joking around about overweight animals, the more people start joking about, around about overweight people, you know? And, um, if you see overweight people out there, don't laugh at them, you know? I mean, there's probably reasons why they're overweight. And it's not easy to lose weight. You know, maybe they had some kind of uh, disease or something that caused it, you know? So, people can be very mean, um... <clears throat> when it comes to judging people and stuff like that, so um, I feel that this is a dangerous trend that they're doing by like making fun of all these overweight animals is like leading um, everyone to start making fun of overweight people. So that's not good, you know. I mean, yes, it's a very big cat. I mean, but we've probably seen even bigger cats, you know. So I mean, I really don't think that's a good way to go by um, you know it seems the owners of this cat were probably um, making this cat get overweight on purpose you know as some kind of sick joke or something this is not something you should be doing to your animals you know I mean it's weird because people say oh, well you just leave the food there and then they go and eat it um, <clears throat> but there's a difference you know you don't leave tons and tons of food for your animals to eat all the tons and tons of food, you know? You feed your animals in portions. <coughs> and it seems that these owners of these animals are very lazy. They, it seems that they just want to throw a whole bag of food out there every day and just leave it there, you know? And they don't want to at least feed the animal uh, smaller portions two times a day, you know? So it seems that that's what they're doing. You know, and these are really bad owners, you know. You see this person here, like, he's laughing. I'm not sure, it looks like a girl. You know, and she's, like, laughing, you know, but that's not right, you know. It's weird. For all we know, we could be seeing a trend happening of people making their animals overweight on purpose. This is not good. It's a dangerous trend, you know. You see how crazy this world's becoming. It's not right. So that is very strange. Um, <clears throat> it's a very dangerous trend. Um, the way this world is going, it's um, it's a downward spiral. You know, I don't mean to sound pessimistic or a uh, uh, doom and gloom. No, doom and gloom is not just a word. Uh, when I talk about the end of the world, you know, it's like the end of the horrible stuff of the world. It's the beginning of perfection. Jesus returning. You know, that's why I can't stand atheists and. And worldly people, when they say, oh, you're just doom and gloom, you know, they don't, they miss the, the point 
they missed the point on on the joy of Jesus' return, you know. <clears throat> so it's like, um, and I don't mean to sound um, pessimistic when I say this world is horrible. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in this world, but there's a lot of horrible stuff. And um, doesn't mean um, you're uh, always, because um, people say all oh, that leads to depression and this and that. It does if you don't have God in your life, you know. That's why all these uh, atheists, you know. Uh, a lot of people say, well, atheists are happy people and all this and that. Not really. They get into drugs and stuff, so. You know. Um, let's see what else here. Son of prominent, I mean, this story is everywhere. Son of prominent U.S. imam accused of running jihad camp in New Mexico to train kids to become school shooters. Now this was crazy because uh, there he is right here. Um, I saw him and another guy and three girls all wearing the, the white burkas, you know, where you could just barely see the slit of their eyes, you know, and it's weird stuff, man. You know, <clears throat> and they have been doing this for over, I think, 10 years. You know, it's just very strange stuff. I'm not sure 10, it might have been five years, but it's strange how they've gone so long doing this. You know, they were living in the middle of nowhere, <clears throat> and how they flew under the radar boggles my mind. So that is very, very strange. That is not good. I mean, that's like sleeper cell, you know, to the next level there, you know. Um, more rockets being exchanged from Hamas and Israel left and right. It seems it happens in waves, like there's a bunch of rockets being sent and there's a little bit of calm and then it heats up again and a little bit of calm heats up. Like it's like in waves, you know. Um, my question is, when will it start escalating to where it's all the time and it keeps increasing, you know. That's what I want. Everyone's talking about the Space Force. The Space Force. I mean, I think it's good, you know. I hope Trump can get us not just to the moon and Mars, but hopefully um, send humans to Alpha Centauri. Centauri? Alpha Centauri. You know, they say that's the closest solar system to Earth that has life. So, imagine finding caveman planets there, or futuristic um, planets with the whole nine yards, you know, hybrids walking around, you know, the half-human, half-animal hybrids, everyone's cloning themselves like nothing, cloning themselves for the false sense of eternal life, like Rael says. Imagine a world like that, you know, where everything's just, you know, uh, there's been a... Uh, um, nuclear wars on the future planets you know <clears throat> the way we see the uh, space is we tend to think it's funny how it works we tend to think that the extraterrestrial planets are the future planets when technically they're the planets of the past that's why they have lived longer and ex uh, excelled more in technology so the future planets are technically the ones with caveman planets so we tend to see, oh, because it's future, futuristic, we tend to see those planets uh, as the future planets, we tend to see those with extraterrestrials, when actually it's reversed, because the old ones, the old planets are the ones where they've advanced longer. So older planets are more futuristic, and future planets are more caveman-like. So it's very strange how it works, you know. Um, it's funny, I think. That's my only take on how time traveling to the past is possible. By actually going to a caveman planet and bringing them up to speed in technology. And if we find an extraterrestrial planet uh, with monsters around, you know, we could go to war. It's 
it's really crazy. Um, I really hope to God that Trump can send um, humans to Alpha Centauri very soon. Um, <clears throat> and if we do find extraterrestrials and go to war, oh, geez, we'll return. So um, I'm all in favor for it. That'd be so awesome. I mean, even if we were to find caveman planets, we'd bring them up to speed and be like, whoa, whoa, it's too fast for that planet. You know, Jesus has to return, you know. So, you know, Jesus is returning either way, you know. And I'm so excited of his return that, you know, I'm 100% on board, man. I got my bags packed. I'm ready. I'm good to go. Man. Yeah. Let's see here. What else? Next story. So, as you can tell, I've taken a couple days off um, here and there because um, I just, you know, I'm always busy. Um, but now um, I, wa I want to post every day, but it's hard, you know, because I really need to advertise and stuff, and it takes time, you know. So, to try to work everything in the schedule, I'm starting to post every other two to three days. Uh, I start making money. If I start making more money soon, I will post every day. It's just right now it's hard to really um, sort it through. So it's really tricky, you know. I mean, I really want to make a lot of money on YouTube. Um, not just to get so rich, just to be rich, you know. Um, not to splurge and stuff, but I want to use this money to bring Jesus return. So that's the mission I'm on. That's why I want to get rich, to bring Jesus return. And I'm not talking about just like... Um, <clears throat> televangelists, not putting them down or anything, but I'm not looking to create no mega super churches and stuff like that, no, I'm looking for mass marketing to tell everyone what's going on, you know, of the whole human cloning deception, uh, why is there so many preachers and pastors that never talk about uh, what's really going on, the whole uh, abomination of science, why do they never talk about what's happening with human cloning and half human, half animal hybrids? the mad scientists are up to. It seems that they see it like it's so taboo that if they talk about it, they feel that they'll lose their donations or something, you know? They'll lose their followers in their churches, you know? They, they see it like, oh, they don't want to create panic. They don't want to, um, uh, it's too controversial for them, you know? In my opinion, um, those are the ones that are um, <clears throat> not exactly God's favorite. God's favorite preachers are the ones who really you know, tell everyone what's going on, you know. Um, <clears throat> I guarantee you one, one thing. If you tell all your uh, followers in your church what's really going on, they'll be more excited and more uh, filled with the Holy Spirit than those who just hear the day-to-day -day, um, sermons, you know. Preachers out there need to get very um, <clears throat> exciting, very futuristic, very, um, you know, um, <clears throat> very sci-fi, you know. <coughs> because um, people need to know what's going on, you know, and so many people, um, preachers even, they just don't reveal what's really going on because, you know, I don't know, it seems, I don't know what it is, you know, they're just uh, afraid of losing, losing donations, I think is my theory. this through because it's already the 20, 30 minute mark so let's just rush it through. Um, okay okay let's see here almost almost done let's see. so you know the way I see it is um preachers out there, they gotta get so um, exciting energized, you know <clears throat> uh, let's see here. the NFL protests are starting to begin again let's see isn't it weird how you never see them do this and take a kneel for any other sport you never see it for basketball you never see it for soccer, for golf why NFL? It's weird. Now, my personal opinion is 
you don't have to kneel <coughs> during the anthem to protest to make, to make a statement you know the way I see it is that's kind of like anti-american that's leading towards treason even it's promoting anti-americanism which could be uh, leading everyone to um, subliminally start accepting terrorism philosophy so in my opinion I really believe that it's not good to take a knee during the anthem there's other ways to, to protest you know I mean wear a shirt that says uh, let's stop the bloodshed or something I mean something hold a sign or something you know but definitely um, pray for the anthem it's anti-american if you don't you know and it just seems weird we're seeing a a trend happening of anti-americanism which could be leading to uh, terrorist um, fundamentalism it's not good at all mm. now I agree you can't force everyone to um, sing the anthem but you know taking a knee it's just it seems very disrespectful it does you know I agree it's hard to force everyone to sing the anthem and put their hand on their heart and, and all that stuff, you know. <clears throat> but if they don't want to sing it, it's, you know, I hate to say it, but they can't force them. But then again, they shouldn't be allowed to, to take a knee and all that stuff. You know? And it's weird because remember Tim Tebow, when he took the knee, it was different. It wasn't during the anthem, you know, so it's strange. I think they got that from Tim Tebow and twisted around. Okay, I was going to um, load these uh, news stories one, one by one before I started the show. But um, when I started the show, I forgot to load it. So I'm just doing it on the fly here. Um, this is a little bit of delay, but not that much. Let's see. Okay, Really nothing else is here. Custom islands are on the rise. Man-made islands. They should create those here in America. Okay, I guess that's about it. I hate how there's all this um, <clears throat> biasness um, of the news, you know, like, <clears throat> I hate how it's all Republican, Democrat, you know what I mean? I don't get into all that stuff, you know? And I hate how the news is mostly 70% like that. I wish the news would talk about everything. Why is it we never hear about the UFOs appearing on the news? Why is it we never hear of apparitions appearing on the news? Why is it we never hear of people hearing God and, and seeing God and, you know, near-death experience and all that? And, you know, why is it we never hear of very awesome stuff like this, you know? It just gets to me, you know? It's all politics with the news. I wish it wasn't like that. Politics is so so dulled down and it's just it's Italian. I wish the news could talk about everything. A lot of sci-fi I wish they could talk about. Twitter says 
InfoWars hasn't broken its rules, it looks like that's not the case. So now Twitter may be considering of banning Alex Jones also. That was a big story, you know. They banned Alex Jones from YouTube, Facebook, <clears throat> and everywhere, basically. So he just has his website now. And even his website may be threatened of being pulled down. Like, maybe he might not even be allowed to host his own website with his own hosting, you know. <clears throat> I mean, for all we know, the Supreme Court may come in and say that Alex Jones doesn't have the right to um, host his own website talking about, you know, <clears throat> the <clears throat> false flags and all this stuff, you know. So, in my opinion, um, I mean, everyone already knows about it, so we really don't have to talk about controversial topics like that. That's why, like, with me, I avoid all controversial topics, you know. Um, people say it's a violation of freedom of speech, you know, so. It's getting crazy, it really is. I guess that's about it. Let's see. North Korea says U.S. is not adhering to bargain since Trump Kim summit. So, now we'll get into the topic of the day. Oh man, I just got a sudden dry throat all of a sudden. I'm going to be starting a gaming channel real soon, but the way I see it, I'm not sure if I want to... Don't you hate it on Facebook when you're scrolling and it plays the audio all of a sudden? The way I see it is, um, <clears throat> I want to start a gaming channel real soon, um, but the way I see it is, um, I'm not sure if I want to um, <clears throat> start another channel and then have it wait for a couple months to get monetized um, <clears throat> and try to grow that channel or should I incorporate this channel with like uh, certain days where I review games and movies in the whole nine yards I'm thinking of starting to do it like that certain days on this channel review like um, not just games but music and movies and really like the good stuff and the bad stuff um, you know, <clears throat> and um, I'm thinking of like incorporating it like that, you know, because it's crazy. If you try to play games and, and have a show on it, it takes days and days to be the game. So I don't want it to be just uh, uh, overkill, basically, of all this um, hours and hours of just like one single game, you know. Imagine one single game beating it, taking like... Um, over like 40, 50 videos, 40, 50 hours worth. And it seems a little crazy, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy because like with a gaming channel, it seems that you can run out of content and it's just like you're redoing the same stuff. So, um, <clears throat> I guess basically <clears throat> um, reviewing would be the way to go. But... Even then, you run out of content faster by reviewing stuff. So, it's very crazy. I really don't know how to um, 
to incorporate it, you know. Um, I want to have it like, yeah, live, live gaming, live streaming. But it's hard to try to incorporate that with this channel. So I'm thinking of starting another channel or incorporating. I'm really confused about that. Um, I don't want to incorporate it with my music channel because I want to have my music channel as its own own thing, you know. So it's really hard to try to do it all, you know. Um, so I think reviewing is the way to go, but on certain days. But the thing is, is I don't post on a certain days. It's all just random, you know. Um, I would like to post every day, upload every day, but um, uh, it takes time to uh, advertise and all this stuff. Um, you know, <clears throat> so it's all random. I wish it wasn't like that. Uh, if I was making more money, then yeah, I could be po posting more. So that's really what it's all about. So, um, topic of the day. This is very strange. Um, a huge circular craft was found under the ocean. And where was this at again? By Greece. By Greece. Now before I, I um, show this image of this um, circular craft under the ocean, under the water, um, people have told me before, oh, the topic of the day, why do you wait so long? Why do you wait 20, 30 minutes just to talk about the topic, you know? <clears throat> Some people say, oh, the show's too long and stuff like this. <coughs> well, the way I see it is um, if, the, if the video's only like 10 minutes, I feel it's not really getting the full feature, the full, um, what's the word? Uh, you're not getting the full experience, you know? I'm trying to create like an actual talk show here. I'm planning to have uh, uh, guests on the show, up and coming um, um, <coughs> everything you know musicians book writers movie producers everything the whole nine yards you know uh, even um, business professionals you know <coughs> I'm trying to create an, uh, an official uh, talk show experience uh, no longer than an hour uh, two hours too long uh, unless it's coast to coast you know it's my favorite radio station shout out coast to coast uh, George Norrie you know <coughs> Recipes are bell, you know. I'm trying to create like an official sci-fi talk show here, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> and hopefully I could get uh, a show on on Netflix or a cable provider or XM even. I don't know what it'd be, um, but it seems uh, the possibilities are endless with Netflix because they can um, uh, host every single um, content. Um, you know, um, if you think about it, Netflix is becoming like they can they can really host everyone. You know, so it's very interesting to think about. But then you got to think about how can you generate money on Netflix? You know, so I mean, yeah, they pay the top amount to the highest people. You know, so it's hard to really not just break in, but hard to um, navigate it all. So. Um, <clears throat> It is all these business deals, you know. I mean, yeah, if I had a um, five, ten million uh, subscribers, I'd be pulling in a a, a a million views a day. And that's when you can, you know, negotiate with all these uh, companies for sponsorships and all, you know. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's good uh, making money through monetization, but the real money is um, through ads and sponsorships and all. You know, because with monetization with the ads, it's like uh, get by money. Yeah, if you have a, a million uh, views a day, theory is you can get like around a thousand dollars a day, give or take. Sometimes it's six, seven hundred, eight hundred. It just all varies. You know, it varies on countries and varies on watch time, and that's uh, one reason why I have the show for an hour is so people can watch more to generate more revenue. Um, <clears throat> So people say the uh, uh, show's too long. The way I see it is if you don't want to see the news segment, just always skip over 20, 20, 30 minutes, and you'll be into the topic of the day. So, and, you know, I really, I really, you know, uh, hate these, these haters, you know, that just uh, complain for everything, you know. And, you know, <clears throat> I'm trying to bring the, the, the most 
uh, awesome show, you know, possible. And as, as great as I can get it, there's always going to be haters, you know. Um, it's just a part of life, you know. So I just let the haters talk, 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 you know. I let them, you know, <clears throat> say all that, you know. I just laugh at them, you know. Because, like, <clears throat> it seems that these haters have nothing better to do but just mess with us, you know. It's like, <clears throat> it's like, damn, you know, why can't they get a life, you know. So, it really gets to me, you know. So, this right here is a circular um, craft under the water of the ocean by Greece. Now, this right here, that is the circular object. And if you look over here to the right, you see, like, the city, the houses, and the beach and stuff. So, all right here is the water. Now, this is a circular object. Now, what it is, I don't know. I mean, it's weird, because if you look closely to the top, right here, in the center, there's like a circle. But if you look on top, there's another circle. Now, the green light right there, that's just a reflection of the of the camera. It's called the lens flare. Notice when I move the phone up, it moves down. When I move up, it moves. I move right, it moves this way. See, that that green circle right there is a lens flare, and even the the light and under the green dot, you know. <clears throat> but this here right here, this this circle, in the circle, with the white ring around it. Now, if you look up, you see a, a dark circle there. You see another one to the top left, another one to the top middle, top right, and uh, bottom right and bottom left above the white circle. You know, so it's weird. You're seeing, like, other things on it. Now, if this is a real object, it's very strange. But the way I see it is, I think this is not a real object. I think this is like some kind of apparition that appeared <coughs> on Google Images. Because if you look closely, the top looks like green. And then um, it, it turns white at the bottom. And it looks even a little bit see-through on the top. So which proves my theory that this could be some kind of apparition that appeared. Because when you take a lot of pictures on your phone, a lot of times you can't see, like, um, orbs in the pictures. <clears throat> and in these orbs, you know, <clears throat> you see, like, faces. It's weird. A lot of times there's faces. Now, not every time is there a face, but I'd say 90% there are faces in these orbs when you take pictures. I wish it would happen all the time. It's all through the digital phones, even digital cameras. I wish it would happen every time you take a picture that'd be an orb. Um, but then again, that'd be weird, right? If you, every time you take a picture, there's an orb. You know? So it's kind of good there isn't, you know, because we want to have some pictures that look just like the picture itself, you know? <coughs> <coughs> so when you go ghost hunting and stuff like that, that's when I'm gonna really going to incorporate live ghost hunting with this channel soon so that's really where this channel's headed man and it's very exciting I want to start up a ghost hunting crew here in El Paso Texas you know along with summoning apparitions from the sky from God when I use the word summoning people say oh it's summoning the devil and this and that no when you use the word summoning from God it just makes it even more powerful because the devil has no power you know so you know when people say oh summoning is a a taboo word, no, -uh, man. Not when you're summoning from God, man. You know, it just makes it that more powerful. So my theory is, is that this object is not a real object. Um, when the satellite took the picture, I believe God uh, formed this image in the picture that it took, like um, on the fly, like bam, you know, there it is. You know, that's how powerful God is, you know. He can um, make stuff appear instant like that, you know. So while the satellite took the picture, I believe God 
put this apparition in the picture it took. So I believe it's not a real object. Because it looks a little see-through. And it has these other circles that you see a lot in orbs that you take with pictures. And these orbs could be like right in front of you. You know, they could be like, they're all over the place, you know. So when you go ghost hunting, you take pictures, you can see these orbs. So it looks kind of like the same thing like that. That's very fascinating. You know, and the second one here, this was taken in the Gobi Desert. Let me Google where the Gobi Desert is real quick. I believe it's India. I could be wrong, but let me double check. Okay. Let's see here. Where is... I hate when that happens. Where is the Gobi Desert? Okay. I believe it's, um, huh. Okay, so I thought it was India, but technically, it's not even showing exactly where. It's showing Mongolia, China, South Korea. It's not. It stretches across Mongolia and China. So technically the Gobi Desert is in two places. Mongolia and China. How weird is that? I believe God could be telling us something here. Something with China. You know, everyone's all talking about the Chinese terrorists with Trump and all. Could this have to be doing something with that? Now these pictures here very fascinating this right here is like um now you see these these what looks like X's or something those are um um landing pads like um what, what's that called where the airplanes go and then they they fly off on them they're not a landing pad they're a landing strip I think they're called or runway there you go they're the airline runways and um, <clears throat> and that's what these are here. They're like runways for uh, airplanes. Now, if you look closely, yes, this could look like an eye right here in the center. Um, so that's strange. And then if you look closely here, you see like a lot of circles. A lot of circles everywhere. Now, some people would say, um, big deal, it's maybe just... Um, <clears throat> patterns they made or something you know like a prank or something you know but if you look closely here these circles are lighting up like some are dim and some are bright if you look closely here these here are very super bright and they're emitting light that's going down so for that to be um like a crop circle where people just uh pushes wheat down or something that's not what's happening here you know these are dimmer compared to these over here these are emitting light going down this is strange you know it almost looks like those those rings that shoot out in Super Metroid that's a video game reference there um, you know um, you know it also looks like the rings on Sonic you know um, but it's weird. If you notice closely, there's like all these circles are like eights. That's an eight. These are eights. The one right here in the middle is like the infinity sign with an eight uh, sideways is infinity sign, which means it loops. It goes like this, like this forever. You know, <clears throat> so it's weird. We're seeing a lot of eights and a lot of... Um, uh, infinity symbols here you have all the infinity symbols here and it's very interesting they're all in like eights now if you look closely they're all like that wow now this is my theory again this could be maybe not real uh, circles that are actually there maybe there are another apparition that appeared while the satellites took the picture, God showed another apparition. Now, what could the eights mean? I don't know. Could it mean the eighth month? What is that? January, 
February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Okay, we are in August. I believe this uh, picture happened this month. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Whoa, so okay, we're seeing a lot of eights here, and we are in the eighth month. Okay, could eight mean something else? Um, I really don't know what else. Um, uh, the infinity symbol. Could eight mean something else? I don't know. What's well, weird, because 666 is the mark of the beast, 777 is the number of God. So what is eight? I don't know. It's strange. <clears throat> um, I don't think I could get an actual time stamp of when this picture was taken. Uh, Gobi Desert. Uh, Gobi Desert Rings Runway, maybe. And hopefully it could give me a date on when this was taken. Okay, this is dated November 17, 2001. But I think this is something else. Yeah, this is when they found um, uh, this strange circular um, thing of like all these like, um, what looks like tombstones, kind of like the, <coughs> like the, what's it called? The, the Stonehenge, but miniature. You know, they found that in 2011. I think they found it earlier, I'm not sure, but somewhere around there. Um, I'm trying to get a date on when this picture was taken. Um, maybe if I try Google Images. Okay, and, um, nope, not having any luck finding when this picture was taken. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, 7-21-17 is when this site is saying that the picture was taken. In 2017, okay, we're in 2018, there's the eight in the 2018. One of the things I've been researching is the number 23. It's come up a, lo a lot um, in a lot of stuff. That would be a topic for another day. Also, the Bible code. I've been finding a lot of interesting stuff with the Bible code, so I'll be in another video. Um, <clears throat> So what I'm finding here, I believe, is proof that I found it happened last year. Even though it happened last year, does not make this story uh, dated and old and, and irrelevant. No. Um, you know, you could take stuff that happened five, ten years ago, and it's still relevant. You know? <clears throat> I know a lot of times people see it like, oh, it's old stuff. Who cares? You know? Um... The, the way I see it, man, is um, even though this happened in 2017, the eights mean of the eight from 2018. So, I don't know. Could something happen this month in the Gobi Desert? I hope it does. I hope something good happens, like another apparition or something. So let us hope and pray that God shows a sign in the Gobi Desert uh, for the eighth. is the eighth month of this year. And the 8 from 2018. So let us hope and pray that God shows something powerful of an apparition in the Gobi Desert. In this exact location. <clears throat> um, and hopefully it happens. So um, we didn't have that much time to do a couple EVPs here real quick. We'll just go ahead and do two.
just two special EVPs here. Because, um, Usually the way I have it is I have the show, uh, I have the news for 20 minutes and then 20 minute talk of the day. I always say talk of the day, you know. <laughs> I think it sounds better than topic of the day. Talk of the day sounds more um, interesting, you know. Um, and then I have 20 minute um, news, 20 minute talk of the day, and 20 minute EVPs, you know. Um, <clears throat> what uh, slowed me down a little today was um, I forgot to... Um, gather all the articles before I started the show but it was pretty much you know on on the fly as well you know so <clears throat> we'll just go ahead and do a, a set of two special EVPs here so the show will go to maybe 105 110 <clears throat> let's see here. and we'll just do this real quick We'll do, do two EVPs, one on each phone. Hopefully. Hopefully. We get an EVP that talks about what I was talking about here. Of the circular craft under the ocean by Greece. And the Gobi Desert 8 circle rings. What is going on? I want to know what's going on, Lord Jesus, Lord God. Please. I want to be the hero, Lord. We all can be the hero. Amen. Please, Lord, I'm begging you. Please speak to me now through the apps on the cell phones. To let uh, Christians out there watching, uh, to let them know this is from God, I always uh, pray to God every time I do this. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord God, I am begging you. Please bring forth powerful powerful EVPs at this moment please let your angels speak through the apps on these cell phones at this moment Lord hallelujah and please push the evil spirits out Lord we are hoping to hear your words Lord amen hallelujah activates the button to start a new recording session activates the button to start a new recording session you always gotta lower it mute it because if you don't, it's going to be playing back uh, what it hears. See, the way these apps work is it hears what it says in the whispers and it writes it out. Here we go. Okay, let's do this again, because it was... <coughs> <coughs> I had my phone silent, and it was still sounding back what was saying, so I don't know what's going on here. See, music, video, games, other media was up for blast. See, I always have to... See, when I lower it here, I thought it would lower it for everything, but no, you got to go into the sound uh, settings and lower everything. So it's weird, and this phone only got one word, and it was sufficient. Well, not one. Not one word was sufficient, but the word was sufficient. You know, so. It's rare when we only get one word. And what was he saying here? It was saying... Burita? Is that a name, Burita? 
Weef, meant maybe to say wheat. Receptus, that means like either like a reception or receptus, like to receive something, I don't know. And ballworm, B-O-L-L-W-U-O-R-M. Maybe wormwood? I don't know. It's weird. Very strange. I can't form a sentence there. Uh, burrito, weef, receptus. I don't know. Uh, it's definitely not talking about um, what I was talking about here. So we'll go ahead and do two more. And we'll call it that. Here we go. Hmm. All right, here we go. We got the words bleach northeast noodle. I miss you. Gear, G I E R, antithesis, and centeredness. What is it saying? Let's try to form a sentence. Something being bleached in the Northeast. Uh, it's weird. Um, noodle, I miss you. Is that gear, G I E R, antithesis, centeredness? Okay, so something's being bleached in the Northeast. Where? Is that Northeast America? Would that be by um, Maine? Or would it be Las Vegas, Nevada? Uh, weird. A noodle. Uh, what is... What is... What do these words have to mean with the sentence here? Um, antithesis centeredness. So could antithesis be coming out of the Northeast America? I don't know, you know, uh, Las Vegas. I hate to say how bad Las Vegas is, because um, there's a lot of good coming out of it. And, you know, they try to create revival and all. <clears throat> um, you know, <clears throat> I wish these words were better, but um, have to be humble with the words I get. Uh, this one, gash sustained. Polisado, black, you do not deserve nobleman. So, um, gash. Uh, something's being gashed. Gash means like to attack, to hit. Sustained. Okay, so being hit, but sustaining. And palisado, palisado. What does that rhyme with? Palisado. Domo Regato? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Palisado. Maybe, maybe Palace. Palace something. Um, black, you do not deserve noblemen. Okay, so saying gash being sustained, like the tribulation maybe, and uh, the sun turning black. Um, evil people do not deserve heaven. And we are the noblemen. You know, basically, yeah. So that's how I form a sense on these words here. I know it's hard to form a sense, and it's hard to um, 
try to find meaning in these words. Um, too bad these words do not mention what I was talking about, about the saucer found under the ocean by Greece. This does not say that here. This is not even talking about the eights that was found of the circles illuminating in the Gobi Desert. If we would have had the word Gobi Desert, that would have been awesome. Now people could say, oh, it's just recording what I say. No, because I record it after I have been done talking. And it's all real time, so I show proof of, of the EVPs that I get, you know. So this is talking about maybe like the rapture here. Um, the first one, uh, sufficient, I mean. Okay, let's see here. So... The words here, burrito, weave, receptus, ballworm. I don't know what to make of that there. Wheat in a reception. I don't know. Um, bleach, northeast, noodle. Okay, sun coming from the northeast. An antithesis, centerness. Could this mean that the antichrist will come from the northeast of where? Could it be the northeast of America? Could it be... Um, the northeast of the Middle East. Who knows? The northeast of somewhere. Northeast of England, northeast of Germany, northeast of Russia, northeast of India. Northeast of where? Northeast of where? You know, that's the question. So let us uh, keep an eye out for an antithesis coming out from the northeast of somewhere in the world. Uh, so weird, because I'm here in El Paso, Texas, in the Northeast, so... I don't know, that's, that's kind of weird here. And for Ghost to be mocking me, saying all this is antithesis, you know... Um, maybe they they want to push their antithesis to the world. You know, like with Rhea, who says human cloning is eternal life, you know. A deception. So we'll go ahead and end it there. Please like, share, subscribe. Please tell everyone you know to like, share, and subscribe. Um... And hopefully I could grow this show to be one of the top YouTubers, you know. I guarantee you all, if I become a top YouTuber, I'll put everyone on. I'll have everyone on my channel. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you all. Good night. Peace.